All right, so to validate input fields, we have a validate function available on the request object. So if we grab the request object and chain a validate method to it, this will take an array of rules. So we can pass an array here, and it is an associative array where the keys are our form input names and the rules are Laravel rules. So let's start with username. We want to pass an array or as a text, the rules that we want to apply. There are a lot of rules available to us. For example, required. We want to make sure this field has some value or the maximum value that we expect. So 255, which is the same as our database. So if you want to see where are these rules coming from, we can go to Laravel documentation under validation. If you scroll a bit, we have available validation rules. And there are a lot of them but you can explore and use the ones that you need for your application for example you want to make sure a field is numeric or it has a minimum or maximum value and so on so all of these rules are available on the documentation this is one way to provide the rules another way is to just add text here so we can say required and then using a pipe we can separate it say maximum value 255 this is the same as adding that array but with just one string. I personally prefer using the array. Now we want to do the same thing for email. We want to make sure it is filled, so it is required, and also there is a maximum value, and also it needs to be a proper email. Now there is another rule we need to apply here, but I'm not going to do it now because I want to show you the error we get. Next, we have password. Again, this should be required. There is no maximum, but we can apply a minimum value, let's say three, so at least three characters. Also, it needs to be confirmed. So this is the interesting part. So let's go back to that validation rules, and we have this confirmed rule. And like it says here, that the field under validation must have a matching field of the name underscore confirmation. So back to our template, we called our password field password. Therefore, if we want to confirm it with another field, we would call it password underscore confirmation. If this was called, I don't know, secret, this should be secret underscore confirmation. And Laravel would automatically look at these two fields and make sure they match. Otherwise, it would give us an error because of this simple rule. And you can see how powerful and easy it is to work with Laravel validations. We just want to die and dump if all the validations passed. But if there is an error, we want to see the error. So let's go back to our website and try to register. Now we said these fields are required, so we need to get an error. We don't see anything. But we noticed that the form is also not submitted because we are not getting to this die and dump. So we stop here because the validations fail, but we don't have any feedback. Now when the validations fail, it gives us an error state, if you will. It gives us a variable that we can just grab it in our template. For instance, under our username, we can use an error directive that would take the key of the error we want to show. If we pass username, which is the name of our input field, we can show the message here and we would have access to a variable called message. This is all done by Laravel behind the scene. So I try to explain what's happening here. Basically, when we try to validate the username field and it fails, it gives us some sort of an array like this where the key is username and the message is whatever the message is. For example, this field is required or the maximum value is 255. So we have this key, which comes from here, and the message, which is auto-generated. And that's why in this error directive, we can call using that key. So let's do this. So let's test this out. If I press register, we get the username field is required. So these texts are default by Laravel, and you can actually customize these, but that's for another time. Now, what I want to do here, I want to cut this and add a P tag, add the class error. So now it is like that. And I want to also make the border red when there is an error. So after this input class, if I just add ring red 500, which is part of Tailwind, we get this red border, but I want to see this only if there is an error. So we can just wrap that a specific class with this error state again, like so, and then end it after that class. Now let's go back here and press register. Now the border is red and also we have a message here.
that's basically how you show error messages in a blade template. So I'm going to copy these and paste it for the email and just change this key to email. Also this error message right under the input like that email we don't have to change this message because that's the default value and for the password let's say password and let me copy these for the class so i'm just going to paste it here change it to password and for the confirm password i'm going to add the class but we want to keep the name as password because the field under validation is this one but if they don't match we want to make the border red and show the message under password so there is one message for both of them all right so let's give it a try we have our errors let's add some values here so username email i'm going to add something that is not an email and the password let's say something that is not going to match press register you notice our username was correct however we lost the data so that's one thing we need to address. For the email, we get the proper message that says email field must be a valid email. And the password says does not match. So the reason that I kept the email type as text was this error message. Because if we change it to email, then the front end or the browser will get on the way and we will not get to our Laravel error messages. So I prefer to keep it as text. Let's just do it one more time. This time I want to add a proper email and I'm going to add 2121. So we said minimum character must be three. So they do match, but we get another error which says it needs to be at least three characters. Now let's address this other issue that we are losing our data every time there is a mistake. This is also very easy to handle. Basically what we need to do, we need to keep the old value of that field if there is an error on the input field that we want to keep the value we can add the value attribute use the double curly brackets then there is a function that is called old this function takes the name of that input field that we want to preserve so we want to say keep the old value of the username and i'm just going to copy this and paste it for email so only username and email would need this so now if i just add something here a proper email and name and a password that is not correct we don't lose the information that the user has already provided we just have to provide a proper password so let's do this 321 and 321 pass register we get to that die and dump meaning our validations passed now the rule that we need to apply here for the email i can't show you just now we need to actually register a user and that is about the email being unique and remember in our database the email property must be unique so we will see the error when we register the user so in the next video we will go through registration login and redirect